welcome all the topic for today's session is failures of pivoted joint from unit 2 uh, that is design of fasteners in this session we are going uh, going to discuss uh, failures of pivoted joint strength of pivoted joint efficiency of pivoted joint and design of boiler joint the first topic that is a failures of pivoted joint we are mainly going to discuss the various uh, types of failures of a riveted joint whenever a joint riveted joint is subjected to uh, various stresses in the second topic we are going to study the strength of a riveted joint that is uh, we are studying the concept of strength of a riveted joint third one is efficiency of a riveted joint we are studying the relation required to evaluate the efficiency of a riveted joint and the fourth topic is the design of boiler joint in this topic we are going to study the design procedure of a longitudinal joint of a boiler so now let us go for uh, the various uh, types of failures of riveted joint the first one is the tearing of the plate at an edge in the last session, we studied that a uh, riveted joint is a permanent fastening of two plates with the help of rivets. That means a riveted joint is a permanent joint. And uh, this riveted joint may be subjected to various uh, uh, stresses like uh, shear stress, tensile stress, crushing stress, etc. during practical use. And due to this, the riveted joint may fail. So in this topic, we are mainly uh, studying the different types of failures and uh, the knowledge of this is very important while designing the uh, uh, riveted joint just in order to find out the safe dimensions uh, in order to avoid the failure. So the first failure, first type of the failure is tearing of the plate at an edge. So a joint may fail due to tearing of the plate at an edge as shown in the figure. This can be avoided by keeping the margin m is equal to 1.5 into d where the d is the diameter of the rivet hole. So if you have a look over the sketch here, you can see this is a riveted joint, lap joint and the tearing of the plate at an edge takes place like this. See this is the tearing or a failure like this. So this failure is known as the tearing of the plate at an edge. So this is uh, the D diameter of the uh, rivet hole and this is M the margin. Now uh, the margin you know that the last session we studied the margin is nothing but it is the distance from center of the rivet to the edge of the plate. This distance is known as a margin and uh, this uh, type of the failure uh, may be avoided by ke keeping this uh, distance m that is a margin uh, at least it should be equal to 1.5 times the diameter that means uh, if the diameter of the rivet hole is a 10 mm then this distance should be at least equal to 1.5 into d that is 15 mm uh, by keeping this uh, dimension m is equal to 1.5 d uh, we can avoid the such a type of the failure Second type of the failure is tearing of the plate across a row of rivets. So the sketch shows here a lap joint and this is the one row of rivet and P is the pitch here that is the distance from center of one rivet to the center of the another uh, rivet in the same uh, row so pitch and this is a force or a load acting P. Now uh, due to the tensile stress in the main plates, the main plate may tear off across a row of rivets as shown in the figure. Now tearing resistance per pitch length is given by Pt equals P minus D into T into sigma T. That means in this equation, so tearing resistance is nothing but it is the pull required to tear off the plate and uh, in this equation uh, P minus D into T is nothing but it is the area 
which resist the tearing resist uh, which, which resist the uh, tearing of the plate for example this distance from this point to this this point this is the p minus d because we know that from center to center it is a pitch this distance is known as a pitch p and half the diameter of the rivet here half the diameter of the rivet here so one full uh, diameter we will get so p minus d then you will get this distance inner distance from here to here and this length height into thickness of the plate so that will give the area so that area actually will resist the tearing of the plate and uh, that is p minus d into t so this is the area which resists the tearing and when it is multiplied by the sigma t that is tearing uh, that is the tensile stress permissible tensile stress for the uh, plate then we will get the load because we know that always stress is equal to load by area therefore stress into area will give the load therefore this will be the area and this is the stress tensile stress and these two are multiplied we will get the load or the resistance that is resistance is known as the tearing resistance it is also sometimes referred to as a pull required to tear off the plate and uh, the about the unit so this tearing resistance uh, should be in newton and p is the pitch in millimeter d is the diameter of the hole it's also it should be in a rivet hole it should also be in a uh, millimeter and uh, this is the thickness it's also in a millimeter and uh, uh, permissible tensile stress sigma t it is in newton per mm square when multiplied uh, mm square mm square cancels out so the remaining unit here is a newton and uh, that's why the tearing resistance will be expressed in the newton because it is a load it is okay so this equation by using this equation we can find out the what is the tearing resistance or what is the pull required to tear off the uh, plate uh, across a row of uh, rivet now the third type of the uh, failure is shearing of the rivets now you can see there will be a sketch three sketches the first one is a lap joint you know that the last session we studied the in a lap joint two plates are overlapping with each other you, you can see this is one of the plates and this is another plate overlapping and this is the riveting and uh, this is a lap joint and this is a load acting through the two plates now when this plate uh, load acts uh, like this and whenever it is subject to the action on force like this then there will be chances of shearing off of the rivet across the uh, across this particular cross section so that means this rivet will be under a single shear uh, and uh, if you come to the another uh, joint this is a butt joint because this is the one of the plate this is another plate they are butt against each other along this particular cross section and one cover plate is placed here and after that riveting is done for this plate and this plate the riveting is done and when the load acts like this there will be a tendency for the uh, rivet to shear off along this uh, across this particular cross section similarly for the, uh, this rivet also may shear off across this particular cross section due to this particular load therefore i can say that here this particular rivet is also in a single shear why because uh, the shearing of takes place at one uh, cross section this rivet also in a single shear because the shearing of takes place along this particular cross section so in at one cross section the shearing takes place now coming to the uh, third figure that is it is also a butt joint this is one of the plate this is another plate but together here but against here across this particular edge and uh, two cover plates are placed one cover plate 
then another cover plate and after that riveting is done so it is an example of butt joint with two cover plates or two strap plates now say whenever the load is acting like this this is load acting this plate and this is a load acting on uh, this particular direction very practically used then there will be chances of shearing off of this particular uh, rivet like this and uh, it is clearly uh, visible that the rivet will shear off along this particular cross section again it is a shear off across this particular cross section that means this rivet is under double shear why it is a double shear under double shear because shearing takes place at two cross sections one cross section is this another cross section is this so similarly if i if i go for this rivet it is also under the double shear because the shearing takes place across this cross section again the shearing takes place across this cross section so this rivet is also in a, also in a double shear so what we will have to remember here is uh, in case of a lap joint the rivet always will be in a single shear and also in case of a butt joint with the single cover plate the each rivet uh, will be in a single shear and but in a butt joint with double cover plate always the each rivet will be in a double shear so because he, this rivet is also in a double shear and this rivet is also in a double shear because shearing takes place at two cross sections one cross section is here second cross section here also first cross section shearing takes place here also the shearing takes place so why it is uh, uh, very important to remember because while solving the problems uh, we will have to i mean uh, while deriving the uh, formula so you will have to substitute the area which resists the shearing if you go for the lap joint so here the, it is in a single shear so the only the one area will resist the shearing but if you come come here also uh, if you consider one rivet the it is in a single shear so the one area you will have to substitute you will have to consider here and but in a butt joint with the two cover plates each rivet will be in a double shear therefore you will have to consider two areas this area as well as this area you will have to consider so <clears throat> that's why uh, the area which resists the shearing here is in a lap joint uh, this area because this is a cylindrical portion of the rivet shank portion and the area which resists the shearing is pi by 4 into d square where d is the diameter of the rivet and uh, here also the area which resists the shearing is uh, pi by 4 d square where d is the diameter of the rivet because only one area the one uh, will resist the shearing but if you go for uh, the uh, butt joint with the double cover plate since each rivet is in a double shear there will be a two areas which will resist the shearing and therefore the area you will have to take is 2 into pi by 4 d square so that 2 is nothing but it is the uh, two areas which will actually resist the shearing and pi by 4 d square is nothing but it is the area of this particular shank portion actually that area will resist the shearing now coming to the formula to find out the shearing resistance we can see <coughs> shearing resistance or the pull required to shear off the rivet is given by ps is equal to n into pi by 4 into d square into tau in a single shear for example in a lap joint so here in this formula uh, pi by 4 d square is the area which resists the shearing that is the area of the shank and uh, tau is the shear stress induced in the uh, rivet and this n is the number of rivets per pitch length that means whether that particular riveted joint is a single uh, riveting or a double riveting or a triple riveting etc if it is a single riveting n is equal to 1 if it is a double riveting 
joint, then n is equal to 2. If it is a triple riveting, n is equal to 3. So the value of n here depends upon how many rows of rivets are there in a particular joint. This pi by 4 d square is nothing but it is the area which resists the shearing. That's nothing but it is the area of the uh, shank portion and this is the permissible shear stress induced in the rivet. Okay. Now coming to the unit, this should be in uh, area, this should be in mm square and shear stress always in a Newton per mm square, mm square, mm square cancels out. So you will get the shear resistance in Newton. So this is only in a single shear. Say suppose uh, if it is in a double shear, for example, if you are considering the taking the example of a butt joint with the two cover plates, then the formula you are going to use is this. So you can see here area which resists the shearing is 2 into pi by 4 into d square. So this 2 into pi by 4 d square is nothing but it is the total area which resists the shearing. Uh, since the rivets are in a double shear, rivet is in a double shear, you will have to consider the two area. This two comes into picture. Again, this is the shear resistance, sorry, shear uh, stress. And uh, this is the number of uh, uh, rivets in the pitch length, whether it is single riveting one, double riveting two, triple riveting three, like that. Again, the unit is uh, same. This is in uh, mm square. This should be in Newton per mm square and uh, shear resistance you will get in uh, Newton. And uh, coming to uh, the double shear for boiler shell, according to Indian boiler regulation, uh, if you, uh, while designing the bo uh, boiler joint, longitudinal boiler joint, we will have to go for this relation. In that case, it is equal to 1.875 into pi by 4 into d square. This is the total area you will have to take, consider, which resists the shearing. Again, this is the shear uh, stress. And n is, of course, whether it is a single riveting, double riveting, or either double riveting. Uh, accordingly, you will have to substitute the value and find out the shear resistance. So, here the important thing to remember is whether uh, while uh, substituting this particular equation or using this equation, so you will have to keep it in mind that whether the uh, joint given is a lap joint or a uh, butt joint. If it is a lap joint, so you will have to go for the first formula. And again, you will have to check whether it is a single riveting or a double riveting. So for the lap joint, we are using this formula and the value of n depends upon whether it is a single riveting, double riveting or a triple riveting. If it is a single, n is equal to 1. If it is a double riveting, n is equal to 2. If it is a triple riveting, n is equal to 3. Again, in a uh, another, say, another classification, say suppose the joint given is a butt joint. So in case of a butt joint, you will have to consider the same equation if it is a uh, consist of a single cover plate once the butt uh, joint is given you will have to check whether it is a there are a single cover or a double cover if it is single cover plate you will have to use this formula only because it will be in a single shear pi by 4 d square into tau into n n of course number of uh, rows of rivets but uh, the butt joint given uh, if it has two cover plates then you will have to use this equation butt joint with the two cover plates because in that case, each rivet will be under uh, double shear. So, you will have to use this equation. And if the, you are going to design the boiler joint, uh, and in that case, uh, the, if it is in a, a double shear, then use this equation. n into 1.875 into d square into tau. So, by using a suitable equation, uh, we can find out the shearing resistance for the given uh, uh, joint. Now the another type of the uh, failure is the crushing of the rivets. So sometimes what happens is instead of shearing off, the rivet may crush off as shown in this sketch here. 
and uh, the rivet hole may take the shape of a oval. It may become the oval shape like this. In that case, the joint becomes loose and that type of the failure is known as a crushing of the uh, rivets or crushing failure or sometimes it is also referred to as a bearing failure. And uh, in this case, again you will have to find out the crushing uh, resistance or the pull required to crush off the rivet Pc is equal to n into d into t into sigma c. In this equation also, the notation remains same. Here d into t is nothing but it is the area which resists the crushing. If you have a look over here, see d is nothing but it is the from here to here distance, the diameter of the hole it is. And t is nothing but it is the thickness of this particular plate. So when you multiply d into t, you will get the area which will resist the crushing. So this is the area and if it is multiplied by the crushing resist, I mean the crushing stress, permissible crushing stress, then you will get the crushing resistance or the pull or the load required to crush off the rivet. Again in this notation, this n is nothing but it is the number of rivets per pitch length. So value of this uh, depends upon the number of rows of rivets. If there is a single rivetting, n is equal to 1 as usual. If it is double rivetting, n is equal to 2. If it is a triple rivetting, n is equal to 3. So substituting to get and t is of course the diameter of the uh, rivet hole and t is the thickness of the plate and sigma c is the crushing stress. Uh, by substituting you will get the uh, crushing resistance or the pull required to crush off the rivet. And coming to the unit, uh, again the d, the diameter of the hole should be in a millimeter, thickness uh, should be in a mm and uh, crushing stress in a newton per mm square. So the, the unit you are going to get for the crushing resistance will be in a newton because mm square, mm square cancels out, you will get Pc in uh, newton. So this, these are the four important types of the uh, what is a failures in case of a riveted joint. The first one is tearing of the plate at the edge. Second one is tearing of the plate across a uh, row of rivet and the third one is shearing of a rivet and the fourth one is crushing of the rivets. By taking this, I um, mean uh, by using the formula and uh, substituting we can find out the values for respective uh, resistances. Now coming to the strength of a riveted joint. The strength of a riveted joint may be defined as the maximum force which it can transmit without causing it to fail. So that means the strength of a riveted joint is nothing but it is the maximum force transmitted uh, by a joint without failure. So usually it is given by the strength of a riveted joint is equal to least of PT, PS and PC. So in the last slide uh, we have studied what is PT, PS and PC that is PT is nothing but the tearing resistance, PS is the shearing resistance and PC is the crushing resistance. Now the least value, uh, value of uh, out of these three is nothing but it is the strength of a given joint. Say suppose one particular riveted joint is given, so you will have to first you will have to find out the tearing resistance, shearing resistance and crushing resistance by using this suitable formula. And after that uh, the least value represents the strength of a riveted joint. For example, tearing resistance say suppose 20,000 Newton, shearing resistance for example 25,000 uh, new Newton and crushing resistance let it be 30,000 Newton. So the least value is 20,000 Newton. So that 20,000 Newton will be the then strength of the riveted joint. Now coming to the efficiency of the riveted joint. Efficiency of a riveted joint is defined as the ratio of the strength of a riveted joint to the strength of the unriveted or solid plate. So that means, so here comes uh, two parameters. So it is a ratio. 
in the numerator it is the strength of the riveted joint in the denominator it is the strength of unriveted or solid plate so al already we have uh, studied the strength of a riveted joint that is equal to least of pt ps and pc whatever the tearing resistance shearing resistance and crushing resistance its minimum value the least value represents the strength of the rivet that you will have to substitute in the numerator and uh, the strength of the solid plate or unriveted plate it is given by p into t into sigma t that is p represents the pitch t is the thickness of the plate and sigma t is nothing but it is the permissible tensile stress for the given plate uh, since uh, it is a solid plate so without considering the holes rivet uh, uh, rivet holes then the area becomes p into t this is the pitch from uh, center to center distance and t, the t is the thickness so this will give the uh, what is the area and this is the tensile stress so area into tensile will get the load or the strength so p is equal to p into t into segment so if you substitute in the denominator then the total this is nothing but it is strength of the unriveted part or strength of a solid part and numerator is least of pt ps and pc represent the strength of riveted joint so this ratio is known as efficiency so the by using this we can find out the efficiency of the given joint it may be 60% or 70% something like that you will get now coming to the next topic that is the design of uh, boiler joint so here actually there are two types of boiler joints one is known as a longitudinal joint another one is circumferential joint now let us see what is a longitudinal joint and what is a circumferential joint in a longitudinal joint is used to join the ends of the plates to get the required diameter of a boiler for this purpose a butt joint with the two cover plates is used so that means in a longitudinal joint the to get the required diameter so you are going to this longitudinal joint so usually the preferred joint for this longitudinal joint is a butt joint with the two cover plates another one is a circumferential joint so here uh, this is used uh, to get the required height of the boiler required height of the boiler and uh, the joint the type of the joint here is a lap joint so each uh, uh, round plates will overlap with each other and you will getting a lap joint using a lap joint here for a circumferential joint and for longitudinal joint we are uh, using the butt joint with the two cover plates these are the two important uh, uh, types of the boiler joint so in a longitudinal joint we will get the required diameter in a circumferential joint we get the required length or height of the boiler now let's go for the uh, design procedure of the longitudinal joint for a boiler the first parameter we are going to find out is thickness of boiler shell that is a that is t small t so this is uh, the very important uh, design aspect design parameter because whatever the thickness you are going to select it has to withstand the inside pressure of the boiler and the formula we are going to use is t equals pi into d divided by 2 into sigma t into eta this is the formula to be used to find out the thickness of the boiler shell in millimeter you will get the answer <clears throat> so here the pi is the pressure acting inside the boiler in newton per mm square d is the internal diameter of uh, the boiler pressure boiler in millimeter sigma t is the permissible tensile stress of the material it is in newton per mm square and eta is efficiency of longitudinal joint it is expressed in a percentage in decimal you will have to substitute now so this formula can be directly taken uh, from the design data handbook 
uh, written by Mahadevan and Palavir Reddy. So in equation 5.1, page number 79, fourth edition book, if you refer, you can directly, you can take this equation. So note one, the thickness of the boiler shell should not be less than 7 mm, of course, it should not be less, less than 7 mm because it has to withstand the inside pressure. And the efficiency of the joint may be taken from DDH, uh, table 5.1 and uh, page number 84. That means, uh, if in the, while solving the problem, if uh, efficiency is not given, you can uh, select it from the DDH only. For a different I mean, it depends upon uh, which type of the joint, whether a lap joint or a butt joint, depending upon the efficiency changes. And we can select the values directly from the DDH if it is not given in the problem. So by using this problem, we can find, I mean, a formula, you can find out the thickness of the boiler shell. So the second parameter, next parameter we are going to find out, we are going to design is the diameter of the rivet. So which uh, uh, diameter of the rivet you will have to use to join the uh, uh, plates in case of a uh, longitudinal joint. So that is also important and uh, that is given by the equation d is equal to 6 root t uh, whenever t is greater than 8 mm. Where d is the diameter of the rivet and t is the thickness of the plate in millimeter. So this condition is if t, t means the thickness of the shell, we have calculated, um, we have studied in the previous formula. Uh, thickness of the plate, whatever the value you are getting, if it is greater than 8 mm, okay, we can use this formula and find out the diameter of the rivet as well as the diameter of the rivet hole. But in case, if it is uh, lesser, uh, lesser than 8 mm, then you will have to go for, uh, if it is a lap joint, uh, this equation you will have to use. Or uh, for a butt joint, you will have to use this equation. Both of the equation can be taken from the DDH. This is the page number and this is the equation number, page number and equation number. So you can select. But uh, in uh, majority of the cases in a longitudinal joint, so you are using a butt joint. So this formula you will have to use 4 into T into sigma C divided by 1.875 pi into tau. This is formula you are going to use if the thickness of the uh, plate is lesser than 8 mm. If it is more than 8 mm, simply we will have to use this formula d is equal to 6 root t and find out the diameter in millimeter. Once uh, this diameter is found, then you will have to go for a standard size of the diameter. Uh, for that, again, you will have to refer this particular table and find out the st standard size of the rivet. And once the standard size of the rivet d is obtained, then the rivet hole diameter must be at least 1 mm more than the rivet diameter. For example, if you get the, by using this formula, if you get the D value is equal to 19 mm, then by referring the, by taking the standard size, by referring the DDH, uh, the D may be equal to 20 mm. In that case, the diameter of the rivet hole is, uh, should be 21 mm, 1 mm more than the this diameter. So like that, this equation you are using find out the diameter of the rivet as well as the diameter of the rivet hole. Next uh, type of the uh, next parameter we are going to find out is uh, going to design is pitch of the rivets. So we know that the pitch is nothing but it is the distance from center of one rivet to the center of the another uh, rivet in the same row. So that distance is also important while designing and that can be found uh, by using the equation pitch is equal to k11 uh, into t plus 41 mm. Again this equation is also taken from the design data handbook uh, where k1 is the constant the value of which can be taken from again the DDH we can get the value of k1 depending upon which type of the joint whether it is a butt joint whether it is a lap joint. So depending upon, you can find out the value of K1. So once the K1 is selected and if you substitute here, you will get the pitch, the distance between two uh, rivets, center of the two rivets in the same row. And uh, 
So K1 is a constant actually, it doesn't have any uh, unit and T is the thickness of the plate earlier you have calculated uh, that value will have to substitute and plus 41 mm then the total which you will get in millimeter uh, unit of the pitch you are going to get in millimeter now the next parameter important parameter is the transfer pitch we are going to design so you know that the transfer pitch is nothing but it is the distance between perpendicular distance between the two rows of rivets and uh, it is given by uh, pi is equal to 2 into uh, pt transfer pitch is equal to 2 into d because the very d is the diameter of the rivet hole and 2 into d you will get the transverse pitch for the, this is for the chain riveting for example you will have butt joint is there and the chain riveting is there then you will, you will have to use pt into is equal to 2 into d and in case of a say suppose butt joint is given but it's zigzag riveting then you will have to use this equation transfer pitch is equal to 0.33p plus 0.67d where this p is nothing but it is the pitch pitch of the rivet what you have calculated earlier in here and plus 0.67d where d is the diameter of the rivet hole so by using these two equations we can find out the pitch of the rivet i mean uh, uh, transfer pitch now the next parameter we are going to design is thickness of the butt strap so you know that in case of a uh, butt joint two plates are butt against each other and we are using the cover plates or strap plates uh, we can use the one cover plate or two cover plates so depending upon its thickness also will vary and uh, according to indian boiler regulation the thickness of the butt strap that is a cover plate ta can be obtained from the equation again it's from the dth you can get that equation then ti is equal to 1.125 t for single uh, strap butt joint if it is a only one cover plate for the butt joint then simply you can use this equation where the thickness of the cover plate is equal to 1.125 t so that means you will have to remember that in a single cover plate the thickness of the cover plate is greater than the thickness of the uh, main plate on the other hand if it is a butt joint with the two cover plates with the two cover plates with the equal uh, width then uh, the t outer uh, um, cover plate is equal to thickness of the inner cover plate it is equal to 0.625 t so here the thickness you can find out 0.625t where t is the thickness of the main plate so you can see in case of a double cover plate always the thickness of the um, cover plate is lesser than the thickness of the main plate and uh, this is the uh, for the uh, but joint with the two cover plates but of unequal width so one cover plate the width is different for the other in that case outer thickness thickness of the outer cover plate is equal to 0 0.625 t same it is and for the inner cover plate it is 0.75 t so separately you can find out the thickness of two cover plates but in most of the cases uh, we are using a butt joint with the two cover plates of equal width so in that case thickness of the cover plate uh, both the cover plates is equal to 0.625 t by using this equation you can find out the thickness of the cover plate so the next parameter you are going to design is the margin so you know that the margin is nothing but it is the uh, horizontal distance from the center of the rivet to, to the edge of the plate and it is given by m is equal to 1.5 into d uh, if you keep this m is equal to 1.5 d so we can avoid the one of the failures that is the tearing i mean uh, tearing of the plate uh, at the edge so that failure can be avoided by keeping m is equal to 1.5 d so this is uh, the design procedure for longitudinal joint of the uh, boiler 
So important parameters you are going to design is the thickness of the boiler shell T by using this formula PID divided by 2 into sigma T into eta and after that you will have to find out once the thickness of the shell boiler shell is found next you will have to go for the diameter of the rivet hole which is given by D is equal to 6 into square root T and after that so you will have to find out the pitch of the rivets it is obtained by the equation k1 t plus 41 mm where k1 is the constant taken from the uh, design data handbook and the next one is the transverse pitch that is the distance between two rows of the pitch so it is equal to two times the diameter of the rivet hole in case of a chain riveting and in case of a zigzag riveting it is given by 0.33 p plus 0.67 d so another uh, parameter we are going to design is the thickness of the strap plate. So it depends upon whether there are a single strap plate or a double uh, strap plate. If it is a single then it is thickness is equal to 1.125 T where T is the thickness of the main plate. And if it is a double uh, cover plate of equal width then thickness of the outer cover plate is equal to thickness of the inner cover plate it is equal to 0.625 T. So by using these equations we can find out the thickness of the cover plates also. Next one is the margin. Margin you will have to keep M is equal to 1.5 into T. If the diameter of the rivet is equal to say 10 mm then the margin should be equal to 15 mm. Okay now uh, let us go for uh, some of the multiple choice questions on uh, the topic we have just covered. The first question is a lap joint is always in a dash shear. Answer is single shear and a double shear. The answer is a single because mm -hmm. you know that in case of a lap joint the rivet will be under single shear. Right? That means it will shear off at one particular cross section Therefore, the answer is a single. A left joint is always in a single shear. Second question, a double strap butt joint with equal straps is dash. Always in a single shear, always in double shear, either in a single shear or double shear, any, uh, any one of these. So, answer is B, always in double shear. So, you have studied earlier uh, that in case of a butt joint with the two cover plates, the rivet will shear off at two cross sections, at two cross sections, therefore, uh, always the, uh, it will be in a, uh, the rivet will be in a double shear, answer is always in a double shear. Now, third question is the strength of the unriveted or solid plate per pitch length is equal to the first one p into d into sigma t p into t into sigma t p minus t into d into sigma t p minus d into t into sigma t the answer is b that is the strength of the unriveted or solid plate is equal to p into t into sigma t because so you will have to find out uh, you will have to find out p into t it is the area uh, because there will be no rivet, it is solid plate and this is the tensile uh, stress so you will get the strength is equal to P into T into sigma T so this is the answer. The tearing resistance or full required to tear off the plate per pitch length is given by the answer is pi by 4 d square into tau n into d into t into sigma c p minus d into t sigma t p into t into sigma t the answer is c that is p minus d into t into sigma t so that is the tearing resistance or the pull required to tear off uh, across the uh, row of rivet it is given by this equation where p is the pitch d is the diameter of the rivet hole and T is the thickness of the plate and sigma T is the tensile stress. So now the next question is the crushing resistance or pull required to crush the rivet per pitch length is given by P minus D into sigma T, P pi by 4 D square into tau, P into T into sigma T, N into D into T into sigma C. The answer is D, the last one, the N into D into T into 
sigma c. So this is the crushing resistance or the pull required to crush out the uh, rivet n into d into sigma c. This is d into t is the area which resists the crushing and sigma c is the crushing uh, stress and n is uh, whether it is a single rivetting or a double rivetting in the value you are substituting here and uh, that will give the crushing resistance. And uh, now uh, let us uh, go for a uh, quickly let us revise what you have studied earlier. So the failures of a riveted joint we have studied the tearing of the plate at an edge, the first one. This can be avoided by keeping the margin is equal to 1.5 D. Next, you study tearing of the plate across a row of rivets like this. The plate may tear off like this from here to here. There will be tear off. Chances are there due to this particular external load. Uh, so this is a tearing resistance is in this case is given by P minus D into T into sigma T. And by using this equation, we can find out the tearing uh, resistance. So next uh, we have studied the uh, sharing of the shearing of the rivets. In the three cases we have studied one is in a lap joint. In a lap joint you studied that always the rivet is in a single shear because shearing takes place at one cross section. And also in a double uh, in a butt joint with a single cover plate uh, we have studied again the rivet is in a single shear because shearing takes at only one cross section. And in a butt joint with the two cover plates. Uh, each rivet will be in a double shear because shearing takes place at one cross section here, at one cross section here, because it is in a double shear. And uh, accordingly, you will have to substitute in the formula to find out the shearing resistance. That means shearing resistance is equal to n, is equal, uh, n into 5 by 4 into d square into tau in case of a single shear because this is the area 5 by 4 d square and n is the number of rivets per pitch length. Uh, it depends upon whether the given joint is a single rivetting, double rivetting or a triple rivetting. And tau is the shear stress, permissible shear stress for the rivet. And this equation will give for the double shear. In case of a butt joint with the two cover plates, we are using this equation. This equation can be used for the lap joint as well as the butt joint with the single cover plate. And this equation can be used for the longitudinal uh, joint of the boiler. While designing the boiler joint, we are using this equation uh, 1.875 into 5 by 4 into d square into tau. So, next we have studied the crushing of the rivet. So, here what happens is the rivet hole becomes, takes the shape of a oval, oval shape, and there will be a clearance like this between the rivet and this. And due to this, the joint may fail. So this type of the uh, failure is known as a crushing and uh, this can be uh, found that the I mean, crushing resistance can be found by using this equation D into T where D into T is the area of the uh, which resists the crushing and this is the crushing stress and you will get the crushing resistance N is equal to D into T into sigma C again the N is nothing but it is the number of which per number of rivet per pitch length, whether it is a single rivetting, double rivetting or a triple rivetting. So you can see this is the area, this is the total area we will get because there will be a number of say double rivetting, then there will be a uh, total area you, you can consider n into d into t and if you multiply you will get the crushing stress, uh, crushing resistance. Now coming to the uh, strength of a riveted joint, it is always, you know that the maximum force transmitted by a riveted joint without failure. Uh, to find out this, first you will have to find out the tearing resistance, shearing resistance and crushing resistance by using the suitable formula. And after that the minimum value, the least value represents the strength of a riveted joint. And the next we have studied the efficiency of a riveted joint. So it is given, it is nothing but it is the ratio of 
or the strength of a riveted joint to the strength of the solid plate. So you know that the strength of the riveted joint is given by the least value of PT, PS and PC and uh, strength of the solid plate is given by P into T into sigma T. This is the pitch, this is the uh, thickness of the plate and this is the tensile stress. By substituting this, we can find out the efficiency of the given riveted joint. Again, uh, coming to the design of a boiler joint, we studied two types, longitudinal and circumferential joint you have studied. So you will have to remember that this is used uh, to get the required diameter of the boiler and circumferential joint is used to get the required length of the boiler. And uh, generally longitudinal joint is made with the butt joint with the two cover plates and circumferential joint is uh, made generally with the lap joint. Now the thickness of the boiler shell uh, could be found by using this equation, so the notation we have studied. So once the thickness you will get uh, in the millimeter you will get and uh, that thickness must be uh, sufficient to resist the whatever the inside pressure therefore the thickness of the boiler should not be less than 7 mm and the diameter of rivets could be found by using the equation d into 6 into 6 into square root of t uh, if it is greater than 8 mm if it is lesser than 8 mm we will have to go for again two formulas like this and that can be directly taken from the ddh take the standard size of the rivet then go for the rivet hole uh, by adding 1 mm at least 1 mm to the diameter of the rivet Next, we have studied the pitch of the rivets, that is a distance from the center of one rivet to the center of the another rivet. So it is given by P is equal to K1 T plus 41 mm, where K1 is a constant, its value of it is taken from the DDH and uh, its value depends upon whether which type of the joint it is, whether a lap or a butt joint. So directly you can take from the DDH page number 85. So substitute here and find out the pitch, the distance between the two rivets. Next also the transverse pitch. Uh, you have studied, uh, it depends upon the two formula you will have to use. If it is a chain rating, uh, chain rivetting or if it is a zigzag rivetting. If it is chain rivetting, the transverse pitch. Transverse pitch means the distance, perpendicular distance between the two rows of the rivet. That is also important during the uh, making the what is elevated joint for a boiler. And in this case, transfer switch is equal to two times the diameter of the uh, rivet for chain rivetting, and it is equal to 0.33p plus 0.67d in case of a zigzag rivetting. So here it is a pitch, it is the diameter of the rivet hole. Substitute and find out the transfer pitch. Next is uh, the thickness of the uh, cover plate you have studied. For this, you will have to check whether the given joint will have a two cover plates or a single cover plate. So this uh, cover plate comes only in case of a butt joint. Lap joint, you are not getting the cover plate, uh, cover plate or a strap plate. Only in a butt joint, uh, you will have to check whether it is a single uh, cover plate or a double cover plate. In case of a single cover plate, its thickness is equal to 1.125T. And in case of a Double cover plates, its thickness is equal to 0.625T uh, if the two cover plates will have a equal width. If the width is different, then outer uh, thickness of the outer cover plate is equal to 0.625T and the inner cover plate is equal to 0.75T. The last parameter uh, we have designed is the margin, that is the distance from the center of the uh, distance from the center of the rivet to the edge of the plate. So it is to be taken uh, m is equal to 1.5 d in order to avoid the failure of tearing of the plate at the edge. So these are the some multiple uh, choice questions also we have studied and uh, so that completes the topic of this session. Thank you.